This week, we try and block Mark Zuckerberg, get high with pot roulette. We're going to learn about a new startup called Message Party. All that and more on another episode of This Week in Social Media. Welcome to another installment of This Week in Social Media. What episode is it? Because I forgot. Lucky 1-3. Lucky, one, three. One, three. lucky yeah. number 1-3. Wonderful. I am Sean Percival, as always. With me. Who are you? I'm Mike. You're Mike? I'm Mike Brocco. Mike Brocco, of course. Not just any Mike. <laughs> Mike the Brocco. Mike Brocco. <laughs> We're going to learn about Mike's dating life later. In the meantime, who we also have? Judelina, of course. Thank you. The Judelina on Twitter. How is your dating life these days? It's satisfactory. Yeah, that is <laughs> I know. It's not that exciting. Wow. Uh, we have a lot to go over today. We have a great guest. Uh, let's start with some of the hot topics. Oh, before we do that, though, of course, if you haven't already, get the This Week in Social Media iPhone app. Works on the Jesus phone, all versions, flavors. Uh, it's free, of course. Uh, and uh, yeah, just check it out on the App Store there. You can actually watch the show live. You can leave messages. You can profess your love for Judelina or Mike Brocco. Mm. He needs some love, too. Or uh, Sean's hair. Or Sean's hair. <laughs> let's not talk about my hair, because it's overdue for a haircut. and. There's this one, can you see it on camera? This hair right here, look at this. This is like some kind of rat's tail that's just poking out. Well, you bring back the rat's tail. Somebody's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. Well, you know, I'm old and married now, so I don't really need to have style. So let's, <laughs> let's just bring back all those horrible styles from the 80s. Um, let's get started. What's going on? What is this about blocking Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah, I, this is kind of about this story. This is kind of funny. So basically, if it was a bug or on purpose, but uh, users cannot block Mark Zuckerberg. Hmm. Um, so if they show, you can see the screenshot here from TechCrunch. Basically, you get a, an error message, general block failed error, block failed is the error message you get if you try um, to block Zuckerberg. It's like a triple fail there. Um, so this is just kind of funny. Um, the article also points out that um, back in 05, apparently, his uh, business card read, I'm CEO, dot, 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 bitch. Wow. So <laughs> first of all, Good for Mike Brocco so, for cussing. I don't know if you've ever heard him cuss. No, no. Um, Our good boy's going so bad. I know, I know. Yeah. So uh, I just thought this was kind of interesting. Um, you know, from a company standpoint, it seems as if it, they need to address this issue. It seems kind of strange. What, his attitude? His ego? <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if, they can, if there's enough manpower to address that issue. <laughs> so what do you think? Do you want to block uh, Zuckerberg? Or no, but block? I do want a card that says, I'm CEO, bitch. It's yeah, cool. that is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that most people, especially guys, can get away with having a business card that says, I'm anything, bitch. Yeah, I know. It's a little weird. Yeah. Uh, about the blocking, though, I, I, honestly, I bet this was some technical issue and some reporter just got, got wind of it. And, there you go. Who was yeah. going around trying to it? block Mark Zuckerberg in the first place? That's kind of funny. Well, I guess there's a site out there called Block Zuck. Yeah, Block Zuck. I got it. What is this here. site? Is this? Oh boy. So basically, That's not nice. <laughs> here it is. Apparently, some people don't like Zuckerberg, so it's a Tumblr blog, I guess, that uh, exactly shows you how to, to block him. So it's kind of funny. That is kind of funny. That's interesting. Is that related to the fact that you can't block him, or was this some kind of weird initiative before the? Unblockable. Yeah, I think this was an initiative before okay. um, this bug came about. So, so as always, kind of the internet, people with lots of free time, and um, there's the result. Yeah. So uh, you can't block Mark Zuckerberg. Don't even try. On that same uh, Mark Zuckerberg Facebook mm. tip, I, I'm not gonna. I don't have a link on it, but uh, earlier this week there was some discussion about how the Social Network had initially run their scripts through Facebook, and uh, to get yeah. approval for the film, and there were so many requests to exclude things and, and really ridiculous, unreasonable requests that the ne the producers decided to just not have it officially approved by Facebook. I heard about that as well. There were some heated debates, and apparently it came down to two issues. One, showing boobies, which they didn't want to do, mm -hmm. and there was a coke scene as well, which they wanted to dispute. And so, I'm not sure. I actually read the book, and so I don't remember who was doing coke. I'm assuming it was, uh, uh, sorry, what's his name? Uh, uh, Sean, Sean yeah. from Napster. Yes. That's what I remember reading yeah. about that, yeah. So they wanted those two scenes excluded. They didn't get it, though. I heard they're in the final cut. I just don't understand what Facebook has against boobs. I don't know. <laughs> That's a great point because remember when they had the breastfeeding disaster where women were taking photos of themselves breastfeeding and it's a beautiful natural thing and it was block, block, block and, and banned from that point on. Another controversy. Which, as we were talking about before the show, we're actually going to have a new segment about the social media controversies of the week because there always seems to be a new one. And on that note, I'm going to segue into the next one, which is the new dig, which is shipped. 
they finally shipped this thing after a, I don't know, it's been a few years in development. Um, there's Pete Cashmore's beautiful face talking about it. Uh, basically, like the short end of it is it's new, it's better, it's faster, it definitely caters to publishers a lot more. Uh, the power users, though, they hate it. Can we pull up, are you logged in? Because I'm assuming if you log in, you'll see what I saw, which is essentially that when I logged in today, actually all I saw was all these requests for Kevin to think about it. So um, yeah, maybe you can log in real yeah, quick there. In. Why don't you tell the audience your password while you're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, essentially what they're doing is people are actually taking images of the old dig, they're uploading them and saying like, please revisit, please bring this back, and then they're all digging it as well too. And so wow. it's an interesting way of using the you know, voting democracy to help surface their, their feedback. Uh, did you get into there? It just gave me is an error. Working? We should also talk about the fact that they had a really amazing fail well. Everyone knows the fail well, of course. They had a broken ox, which was the, or a broken axle with an ox, uh, very much like an homage to um, Oregon Trail, which oh, we all played. Memories. I'm assuming. Yes. Do you want me to log in there for you? I think I'm good. Here we go. All right. Go into my news. Tell me what you got there. All Let's right. see. So, my news. Here we go. Of course, this is when you try and demo something live and it never works out. Yeah, yours isn't too bad. I wonder if they're starting so to. decent. I mean, I have a pretty small following for 51 followers, following 28 people. Um, I think the key is, is building up enough people that you're following to have it be interesting. Yeah, um, and it, that's I think where a lot of the issues are coming from is because these big publishers obviously can, go, can gather a larger following. And mm -hmm. so when you look at Time and Mashable and these other sites and Engadget, of course, they have these huge followings. And so what they've done is they've taken the power users like Mr. Baby Man and, and Mohammed Salim, they've taken them out of the picture a little bit, although they still have a decent following, and they've replaced them with the big publishers, yeah. which is kind of weird. I don't yeah, know. I mean, it's, the, uh, it's, it feels like it gives more of the power back to mainstream publishers and not the sort of one-off sites that come up with some story. And uh, you know, it's, It'll be interesting to see the dynamics of what type of content surfaces um, and how stuff is dug, so. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't know, I logged in today and it was people complaining about Dig and nothing but Mashable and Engadget stories is yeah. what I saw. And maybe that's unique to my experience because you obviously aren't seeing that same thing. Uh, so uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. A lot of people are saying this is too much VC meddling, that the VCs have gotten in here and, and forced him to do things. I don't know, I think Kevin's a pretty smart guy though. I think he would do what he wants to do. That's, that's a little bit of part of his culture here. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that is a new Dig. I gotta say though, it's a lot faster. So you know, thank for that. The old Dig was just a dog. It was a D-O-G-G. -G. Sorry, I'm out of bad jokes now. <laughs> um, all right, we also want to thank our sponsor of the This Week in Shows, uh, Gazelle. And so let's get them thanked before we hit the road here. Gazelle, if you want to sell your iPods or iPads or maybe your little sister, they'll actually send you a box that you can put your stuff in and trade it in for cash. Now, if you use this, make sure you mention the code TWI5, uh, This Week in 5. Will they take and my cracked iPhones? They would actually take that. I don't think you would get very much for it. Oh, sad, because I really need money to buy a new iPhone. So after we did this, I actually went home and did it with my uh, iPhone 3GS, and they offered me $130. Nice. Which is good. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of like, well, I can either have $130, which buys, I don't know, a lot of cupcakes, mm -hmm. or it can sit in my drawer. I felt, why not? Plus, you don't have to go on Craigslist and post an ad and have somebody try and call you and try and link up with them and be all sketched out. This is a much more reliable source. It's true. I gotta say, um, I know we talked once about you actually finding decent dates on Craigslist, which I still don't believe. Um, but I went and bought lenses when I bought a camera. I got into you know buying lenses, of course, and I remember my wife was terrified. She's like, mm. "No, you can't go meet someone." They're gonna kill you. Don't bring cash. Go see it first. Like, yeah, it was really scary. So this takes the creep out of it. I don't think you can meet a guy to date on Gazelle, though. Not yet. Not yet. But That'd once you guys do, and once I can sell back my ex-boyfriends, ooh, you got a lot of business. You are gonna make a ton of money on that. Well, I don't know. I've seen some of the guys you date. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, how are we doing? You know what? Let's get right into our guests. We have Amanda Payton, and I hope I'm yep. saying that right. Amanda, yep. how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. And um, you co-founded a company called Message Party. Yep. Why don't you give us the elevator pitch? What is that? Sure. Um, Message Party is, is pretty simple. It is a mobile chat product. It lets you basically chat where you're at. So it creates these chat rooms, and you can only see them if you're in the area. Um, but in the beginning, we just launched on Tuesday, and we made a worldwide party just because, you know, early users might not have anyone to chat with. Oh, gotcha. So no matter where you are, you could still get in there and check it out and try it out. Exactly. Yep. That's great. Um, we have a video. Should we play the video yeah, as well? It's video. kind of funny. It's Let's play the video. Fun. Cue up the video. Well, there you go. This blows. I hate my life. I'm so angry I could Muay Thai a seal. 
Buses never run on time. Mass transit is worthless. Mass transit is necessary. I will Muay Thai the face off mass transit. I gotta pee, yo! The weather said rain, too. All this technology and we still just talk about the weather. Age, sex, location check. 26, bus stop, hells yeah. This is god awful. I'm signing off. It's a beautiful day. It's not going to rain. It's definitely going to rain. Who'd win a Muay Thai? Me or Rain? I really hope it doesn't rain. I need to take my dogs out. Ooh, what kind of dogs? I have a chocolate lab. Yep, I just felt a drop. Two puppies, Yorkshire Terrier and Brussels Griffin. That's so cute. Puppies are badass. I prefer cats. 34, male, in hell. You shouldn't be so negative. That cloud looks like an orca with wings. What is Muay Thai? So that's good. Um, really well done. It's funny, when this when I first saw this link, I was actually like, oh, that's horrible. There's another tool that we can use so we can ignore each other and only communicate through technology. I'm, I'm sure you get some backlash there. Um, but as yeah. I watched that, I thought, OK, you know what? It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, it's a behavior that people do all the time. I mean, I can't say how many times you go to a party and it's like, whoosh, everyone's down and they're not talking with each other. So. Um, why don't you tell us, give us some background, like how did this come to be? And, and Sure, yeah, well just, you know, just on the video, um, we, people are very, very split. Like half the people who see it really love it, and the other half are exactly what you said, you know, yeah. they're kind of, they're not sure how they should feel about it. Um, but the whole premise behind the application was basically, you know, you go to a bus stop, and how often do you really talk to people? Like, mm -hmm. I, I certainly don't. But at the same time, we spend so much time on our devices, and so we thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool if there were a way to interact with people around you that was, you know, somewhat digital? And um, we started the project about six weeks ago at the beginning of July. And uh, yeah, we're really excited about it. People, um, the feedback that we've gotten has been great. So it's, it's very exciting. Yeah, I mean, it, it reminds me of an experience I had on Virgin America where you get on the plane and you have those little chat windows and little chat uh, keyboard as well, and you can chat with strangers. It's yeah. it's something that I thought was really cool and interesting. And honestly, I'm surprised that someone has. It took this long for you, for someone, for you guys to do this and, and package yeah. it up in this way. Um, the uh, tell what is your role with them as well? Are you a co-founder of it? Yeah, so I'm the co-founder. Um, I'm the CEO, and uh, yeah, there's there's just three of us now. Um, we actually just finished Y Combinator, the uh, okay. the accelerator out here in in San Francisco. So we're done with that, and we'll be heading back to New York in a couple weeks. So that's great, and I'll ask you the annoying question, like, what is it like being a female CEO in, in this world? I know these articles keep coming up, like, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, um, I guess, you know, for me, I've been so heads down all summer that I kind of, I don't really notice, but, you know, it was funny at Demo Day, it's like you look around and, and yeah, you, you are the only girl. Um, yeah. But I guess, you know, for me, I, I kind of just try to focus on, on making a great product and hoping that, you know, everything else will fall into place after that. Probably the best way you could possibly answer that. That's good. What were you going to say? Oh, well, I, I love the idea of this app. I was just, I fell in love with it once I read the article because that last year I went to Blog World Expo for the first time. And Blog World Expo is heightened real time communication in a way that you don't experience anywhere else. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're logged into Twitter on your computer and you've got your apps, and there are hashtags for each conference for each panel. So, yep. you know, we'll be in a room at a panel and there's a hashtag and you see the stream of everyone talking and this mm -hmm. felt like such a more streamlined way of being able to, to do that. And well, then, and the other thing is I love making, you know, kind of backhanded sarcastic remarks at panels yeah. and I felt Who like doesn't? on Twitter yeah. it's it's so public that sometimes you don't want to associate that whereas, you know, in a chat room you can kind of sit there with your friend and and just go back and forth and and know that the entire world isn't going to see it. Um, so, you know, one thing was funny, we went to the, uh, Facebook did an event with Y Combinator yesterday, mm -hmm. and I was there with my co-founder, and we were sitting there, you know, chatting on the app, and all of a sudden, like, this third person shows up in, in our chat room, and he just started chatting with us, and it was like, I don't know, I just, I felt like it was, it was the coolest thing. Yeah, it's so cool. And on top of it, I think, you know, a lot of people watching that video look at it, and there's a bunch of people at a bus, and so that's sort of public, and there's mass transport. There, that is a little bit more social, but when you're in a city like Los Angeles, and I go to my local Best Buy, I yeah. don't know anybody in the Best Buy, and I'm not, chances are I'm not talking to them, but I right. think it's really fascinating if I do check in and someone else is 
is in the same room at the Best Buy and I can start hitting them questions like, I'm trying to find insert product here and they're like, well, I'm trying to find the same product. Let's meet up in that aisle. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. You guys are blowing my mind because I didn't even think about this for conferences. It would yeah. be huge for conferences. Yes. Because there's always something that we used to call the back channel, and typically it was an IR, and it's exactly what you said. Yep. It usually was an IRC channel that very few people kind of knew about, and it was where you would really get dirty and nasty and say how you feel, yeah. as opposed to Twitter. So, I mean, you've captured the back channel in such a more convenient, easy way to use. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys are going to do great. You, yeah, whatever you sell for, I don't know. It's got go for a hundred million. This is a great idea. <laughs> okay, got um, it. With um, when you're setting up the, the rooms, because I haven't dabbled with it too much yet. I haven't quite yep. gotten there yet. Um, how do you prevent duplicate rooms? Like, how do you how do you sort categories? You know, sort of how yeah, does the so, so the version that we released, we actually have a new version that we're submitting today to the App Store that has a whole um, a lot more functionality mm -hmm. um, and. You know, one thing that I think we really, really needed was a delete button, right? Because right now you can't delete a room, and so we just figured it was going to fill up with with a bunch of spam. So now we have a delete button, and um, the next feature we're going to release is time exploding rooms. So if, for example, you just wanted to create something for 24 hours, you could, you know, set the room, and you know, 24 hours later it would just be gone. So it it creates this sort of ephemeral kind of of communication medium. Would there be any way, because I, I played around with the application, um, and I love the, uh, you can kind of see easily who's in the room. Um, mm -hmm. is, is there a way to, maybe down the line, being able to friend them within the application? Yeah. Um, maybe see their other social profiles if they display them on their Facebook account? See what other account. rooms they're in, maybe? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the first version, we really just wanted to test the concept and mm -hmm. see, you know, who's going to be interested in something like this. And the response has been just phenomenal. And so now we're, we're getting really excited to just roll out a, a whole bunch of new features. Um, one question that, that came to my mind when I was checking out the application, which I'm sure you've been asked, is um, you know, this seems like a logical step for something like Foursquare mm -hmm. or Gual or some of these other location services to build into their service. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering how you thought of that and what do you think about um, them possibly entering this space? Sure. I mean, I, you know, I think that, that chat is something that a lot of applications already have. Um, and so you know, for us, we're just trying to be super, super, super dead simple and really fast and really easy to use. Um, and so, you know, I would love it if, if Foursquare had in-venue chat. I think that would be great. And, you know, one thing that's interesting is we thought that we were going to um, use a, a venues list from, from one of these services, and we realized that, like, people just want to make random chat rooms mm. called whatever they want. They don't necessarily want to name them after venues. And so, um, so you know, I think that this is actually, like, pretty, pretty separate from them. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's another app I'm, you're probably familiar with called Text Plus, which has mm -hmm. some you know similar characteristics. Mostly, it's you do create rooms, or I, I think they call them communities. It's yep. not it's not um, location based as well. Um, you know, we had a question in the chat room: uh, How do you protect your privacy in a message party? Well, I think really you're not really giving up much information about yourself unless you're right. unless you're sharing it, right? You're not yeah, your I mean, phone number or anything. You know. So one thing that we debated a lot was whether to use usernames or um, real names. And so the app requires Facebook Connect, which actually has made a lot of people um, not download the app. But sure. seen that, that the behavior has been, I think, much better than a typical chat room just because you cannot hide behind anonymity. Mm. Yep. And so I think, you know, it's, it, it's definitely a choice, right? It is, it, it, you will be seen in the chat room. Um, so anonymity is something that we'll we'll think about down the road, but for now, I think we'll we'll stick with with Facebook Connect. Yeah, I I assume it's just it's easier adaptation, easier for someone to get started. You know, just click mm -hmm. a few buttons. You don't have to create an account. People are are pretty sick of creating accounts at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's go back a few steps. Actually, you talked about Y Combinator. I think a lot of people are interested to know how that works. Uh, mm -hmm. You were part of one of the classes. You were or you were funded yep. by them as well too. Yep. Um, so Y Combinator, uh, we were part of the summer 2010 batch. So um, we were, I was living in Boston before, and we moved out to Menlo Park. And um, Y Combinator doesn't give you office space. They just give you a little bit of money. And then they have this big demo day at the end of the summer. So we've been working um, on different projects since about June. We actually started this project in early July. And demo day was this week. It was uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. So, How'd it go? Oh, it was great. It was, it was awesome. Demo day, there was just such energy in the room. There was 36 startups this batch, 
And so it was like two and a half minute pitches, very, very, very rapid fire. Um, exciting, very exciting. That's great. Did um, Ron Conway come up to you afterwards and, and throw a, a basket of money at you? Did, <laughs> did you get any, any interest there? Uh, oh, we're not talking about, about oh, okay. raising quite yet. So someone, like I'm it. sure someone had to have reached out though. Someone, so, someone's interested. We are we are talking to investors for That's sure. Good. That's, That's good. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, tell yep. tell us about your team. How many mouths do you have to feed? It's it's yourself and two others, and that's yes. it, or yep. okay. Yep, that's it for now. Um, we're looking for for an Android engineer actually, so we can build out an uh, on the Android. But perfect. Um, yeah. That's a question that actually came up in the chat room. The chat room's well, asking. So heads up. Yeah, yeah. We want to do Android and BlackBerry. Um, those are those are very high on our priority list. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's it's me and then two uh, two other engineers. Yeah, it's funny, you cannot forget Android anymore. Every time I see there's an iPhone conversation, there's immediately a comment or someone commenting, why no Android, I hate iPhone, iPhones for, for you know, sissies and pretty girls, and, and I'm a real man, I have an Android or, or a woman. So yeah, you, cannot fit, you can't forget Android. Uh, do you have experience, you know, is it harder to develop for Android? It seems like the, now the market's full of these iPhone developers. Is there Android developers out there as well, or are they hard to find? Yeah, I mean, there are, there's definitely people uh, moving in that direction. I mean, we haven't, um, we've just been so busy with the launch that we haven't actually looked into finding an Android developer, but we definitely have some great leads, so. That's awesome. great. Just out of curiosity, with this being such a valuable tool, sort of in the convention or event scenario, are you, do you guys have plans to do some marketing to reach out to partners in those areas? So um, you know, the funny thing is, they've actually been reaching out to us. Mm -hmm. um, I think that just because the product is so simple, people see it and they're like, "Oh, this is this is what we want." And so we're we're definitely talking to a few people. But yeah, we'd love to to start conversations with with event organizers. Okay. Oh, Question. Uh, it relates to, to the name of the company. Uh, MessagePartyNet is your website. Yeah. I'm interested to see what the thought was. Um, you know, obviously, you clearly wanted that name, but maybe the domain was t too expensive. The .com. Uh, what well, are your thoughts you know, for? You know, what's funny is that so they. I emailed them and I was like, you know, I really want to buy the domain because MessagePartyNet.com right now just forwards to another website and. They didn't reply to my emails, but they friended me on Facebook. Ah. So, I don't uh, know what that means, but... Uh, that means they're doing their due diligence to see how yeah. much they should ask for. <laughs> sure, you know, I, it's a mobile app, so I'm not too concerned with sure. not having the .com. Hmm. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, but yeah, in the future, you use like an escrow service. That's what I do, so people don't know who it is. Because um, right. the problem is, if you have any good news, which I'm assuming you'll have in 30 days or 60 days about funding or something, mm -hmm. they're going to see that and be like, all right, the price is going up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and then I also I use a service called Pool, pool.com, and you can actually like tag that domain. Just in case they lapse, it'll grab it for you as well. But nice. oh, great. I, that's what I've done in the past and to pick up on domains. Um, I also kind of wanted to ask you what your general thoughts on about location. I mean, obviously, location, location, location. Everyone's doing it. Everyone wants it. Um, everyone's done it really great, and so Facebook has copied everyone. Like, what do you think? Like, what is this? What is the ecosystem of these location-based apps? What is their future, and, and what do you hope to do with yours? Sure. Well, so I've been um, a huge, huge, huge fan of Foursquare since last year, and I've just been following kind of all of the interesting things that they've been doing, and I, I, I think that this this whole space is just going to get enormous over the next few years because what you realize is like when you're sitting behind your computer, um, you know, you're not out interacting with people. But the mobile device and, you know, especially smartphones has sort of put that power into your hand. And so it's really, you know, there's this interesting convergence between the online and offline worlds that is just going to develop into this huge market. Yeah, I know. That's I like to think about that too, and I've I've read on a lot of uh, what they're doing in Japan, which actually there's some very some a lot of similar apps in Japan as well. This is almost mm -hmm. commonplace. These kind of proximity where they match you up with someone because they like kitties and you like kitties, and then they you know yeah you guys make kitties together. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's interesting. I mean, what is it going to be? I mean, it almost seems like we are developing this culture of this is how I walk around, this is how I interact. Um, I'm assuming at some point we'll have a HUD, like a heads-up display or, or <laughs> implants or something like. You know what I think get, is get interesting. Get crazy. What's, where's the future going? Well, the way that you know people met each other on the internet before is you would meet on some site, whether it was Facebook or MySpace yeah. or MySpace, a dating yeah. site or whatever, a forum. But then you know the 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 way that you organized an offline meeting was always sort of awkward, right? You'd have oh, yeah. to like you, maybe this person is weird. I don't know. Whereas. You know, when you have the mobile device and you're talking to people who are directly around you, that process is just instant. You can and see if they're weird right there. <laughs> it's right in front of you. Exactly. So what does that mean for like 
how we'll meet people. I think that was the, a lot of um, the motivation that went into the video was, you know, how are, are people going to interact as a result of having these, these smart mobile devices? Yeah, that, I think that's a new behavior, and it's happened to me a few times where I've checked into Foursquare, and I've seen someone I've known or want yeah. to know, and they've just checked in at the same location. And it's weird. You start to do, you do the, you know, your behavior, and then you kind of look around. You're mm -hmm. like, wait a minute, where are they? And I checked mm -hmm. into an ice cream place um, with my wife when, when she was pregnant. We made a lot of ice cream runs, obviously. And uh, my friend had checked in like five minutes before, and I'm looking around, and sure enough, he's sitting in a car right in front of the place. And, yeah. and so I think that's something new. I mean, how is this going to work, though? I mean, how do you go up and approach someone? I mean, Julian, you're very unapproachable. Like, how do you go up? How are people going to go up to you in, in public and be like, "Hey, I noticed we're in the same thing"? Or, I guess you start the conversation here and then you segue it to some you're, kind of in real. You're going to have to you're going to have to brush up on your social skills because you have to get very good at disengaging. Be like, yeah. "Oh, well, yeah, it was great chatting with you in the room. I gotta go. Bye." Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Practice. Yeah, should be interesting. Um, Tell us something interesting about your history coming here. What was it like making the uh, going after the American geek dream and, and coming here? Yeah, um, gosh, something interesting. Well, we actually so we actually worked on another project for mm -hmm. the first four weeks or so of Y Combinator. And so you know, one thing that I really learned is like if you're not working on something that you really love, um, you shouldn't feel bad just completely ditching it and moving on to something else um, because you know that's that's what we did and and. It's been great so far because now I'm just you know I'm in love with this and and I think it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. That's good. Was it the same team that moved over or or was it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. It was the same team. We were working on a project in the recruiting and human resources space. Um. And I just I I'm not interested in that market. So. Yeah, it sounds kind of boring. Not, not as fun as this. I have to yeah. say when, uh, when I visit Amanda's site, AmandaPayton.com. I was kind of intrigued because that's a very interesting uh, website design you have there. Oh, uh, thank you. It's from uh, New York Magazine is the inspiration behind it. Oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, these these kind of matrices around uh, kind of what you are. What are the labels? I can't see them. So the there. top one's highbrow. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And then uh, brilliant on the right and bottom is lowbrow and then despicable on the left. <laughs> Facebook is despicable. They're in the right place, right? If I'm reading that right, great. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why was delicious? Why is that despicable? Oh, well, I think that I, I, I feel like there's so many more places it could go, and I'm like waiting for Yahoo to just make, make it more amazing. Not going to happen. Yeah, don't think so. Yeah, you're probably familiar with the dodgeball story. I, I think it's a very similar one. And if you follow Josh on Twitter, you can see his ramblings. And actually, the, well, the guy who, who kind of founded Delicious, he kind of stopped even complaining about it, I think. Yeah. Even he's yeah, kind of I, up. I'm so in love with that site. I just, I think it's, you know, I use it all the time. It's actually great for web research mm -hmm. um, yeah. because, you know, the following is is still so passionate. So I, I use it a, a lot. God, that would be great to bring that back. I think it's because it's not overly social and annoying. It's not overly marketed. It's just, it's like Craigslist. It doesn't look beautiful, but it doesn't need to because it's yeah. such a great utility. And yeah. yeah, I mean, I remember working with like PR agencies, and they would compile everything for us, and they wouldn't send us a, a email or a doc. Like they would go, "Hey, check out my delicious. I have a special, you know, folder and tag for you guys. Here's mm -hmm. everything you should know going on in your space. Here's everything related to your company as well." Yeah. So it is. It is a great tool. Maybe I don't know. It'll probably sit out there for a while. I don't think they're ever gonna sweeten it up, though. Unfortunately. Um, all right. Well, I think on that note, unless you guys had any more questions, we're going to let Amanda go. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks I just so got much. a little little fangirl right there. I was like, ah! A little bit. So excited. That's OK. <laughs> Amanda's worth it. Thank you so much for taking okay, the time to talk with you. us. And uh, check her out, messageparty.net, not .com. And then, of course, it's available in the App Store. And I think you said you have an update coming this week as well? Yeah, so the, we're submitting it this week. It should be ready in the next uh, one to two weeks. Sounds good. Thanks okay, again. Great. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Cool. Yeah, it's funny. I thought that app was kind of silly at first, but now I think there's actually something yeah. there. Yeah. You can imagine like concerts or sporting events. Pretty yeah. interesting to just engage in conversation in real time about what's going on. So. Well, and let me tell you, when I went to Blog World, after I left, I felt like a loss in my life because I went from having this hyper connection and yeah. constant communication across numerous platforms, chatting, you know, directly with people through Twitter or, or through hashtags for panels and having the panelists pull questions and comments from the conversations yeah. we're having on the back end. I, I want my life to be like that. So when I saw this app, I was just like, 
this is me, you know. Are you sure it wasn't the alcohol? Yeah, it was alcohol. No, I wasn't drinking during the panels. Oh, you weren't? I was drinking it the rest Vegas. of the time. Yeah, but... <laughs> I mean, I've never gone, actually. I hear a lot of stories about Blog World. It was so much I fun. I might try and go this year. We'll it have to see. It was so much fun. That's good. And then it's a plug for Blog World. Blog World, you could send your check to this weekend, yes. 902 Colorado You can Boulevard. send Judalina's free pass to Judalina's house at Judalina Street. I know the guy that puts on Blog World. I hear. So, I'll hook you up. <laughs> uh, what's going on? What's going on in the news? So, uh, the first story is kind of a fun one. Uh, this was a Judalina, uh, one that Judalina took a liking to. Uh, High Stranger, which is uh, chat roulette for stoners. So uh, That's amazing. Uh, basically, Chat roulette, except for people who are stoned. Um, <laughs> Wait, aren't don't you have to be high to go on chat <laughs> roulette? Yeah, I was going to say, okay. like, isn't that like the demographic already? Um, okay. So, so here's the the story. Let me go to the site here. Um, I don't think we should. Oh, Does it uh, work? No, that you went to oh, chat roulette, which, okay, by the me, way, is yeah. still down. Yeah, it is. They down. were supposed to be back up a few days ago. I don't wow. know what's happened. The okay. version two apparently is not fully baked. So I don't um, know if we should do this fully live. Fully baked, didn't done. Can, can we do it? We should do it live. Let's, yeah. Are we gonna do it? Uh, let's spice it up. Put Julian. Well, are you a bit? Let's oh, see. My oh, email no. address. Okay, yeah, this is gonna get spam. All right. Yeah, we they, can. You're gonna but, get all kinds of like you know advertisements <laughs> for marshmallows and uh, <laughs> other things. So I love chat roulette. Um, yeah. Ever since I saw the Morton, is that his name? The piano. Yes. The piano, the piano improv player, guy. Yeah. It's just been it's been one of my favorite just social media outlets to just have a sense of humor. Uh, but then I saw this, and this was just great because off of that ex last exorcism spoof, sure. chat roulette just kind of hasn't been doing much. Yeah. And you know what? The stoner community needs their own social media outlet, and I think that this is the way that they want to communicate with each other. Clearly, they're high. They've got <laughs> interesting things laying around their house. Everything's going to be entertaining. It, yeah, I mean, everyone wants to see your, you know, your wizard bong. It's, it's pretty <laughs> fantastic. And, you know, your, your mom in the background, you know, yelling at you. Um, so is the site up? No, it's not, it's, it's not up at all. It basically, yeah, you sign up and it redirects <laughs> you to their fan page. That's too um, bad. Which is the Big so, Lebowski. Okay, so yeah. basically these guys are just going to do anything they can to get sued for these kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's the deal here? This is something that they they want to do. A bunch of guys got high and made that website one night. Like, help me understand. It's They're soliciting for help or something? Yeah, from what I can understand, it's just a pure joke, just for fun. <laughs> That's that too bad, because they crunch. really have a market. In fact, I think they should go after High Times and get them to make High Stranger the official social media app of the magazine. I agree. But you know what? I'm just a brand thinker. What can I say? This is some Teach and Chong. The, the, one of those guys will put their name on anything. Yeah, Teach and Chong brand social media app. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate you guys. I saw it on Twitter. I thought it was funny. I think it's funny, and I am not surprised that Alexia over at TechCrunch wrote that up. Um, <laughs> very good. Uh, what else we have? So this is a cool company that um, that was actually another uh, YC Combinator company that mm. uh, had their demo day along with. Uh, um, the app we just talked about, but uh, basically it's called Fridge, F-R-I-D dot G-E. And um, this is a cool service that basically um, is for creating private groups, so kind of like what Facebook lists are, except it's focused on that entirely. So the user experience is all about private groups. One thing Facebook does a terrible job of is sort of segmenting people in groups and um, sharing information with just certain people. Um, if you try to go through your settings, you know, it's like you need a PhD to understand what. Yeah. Sure. So um, this is a great uh, service, very simple, dead simple, just about groups. Hmm. Um, it kind of reminded me of um, Social Cast or some of these other enterprise Twitter clients, which just have groups and, and focus on messaging. Um, but what do you think about this? Do you think, um, you know, one of the big shortcomings for me, at least, with Facebook is groups. Hmm. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about that. I oh, I hate groups. I really yeah. do. I mean. So Mark Zuckerberg, as she was saying, they had like a Facebook event, and, and even even old Zuck was on the stage saying, "People don't use lists. People don't know how. They don't want to." Yeah. And I don't, I don't, he didn't give any data, but I think that really, when you think about it, you could share within groups, within people, sort of, I guess, yeah. to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, the groups. I mean, why would they want it to be private? Because they want everything to be public, right. obviously. Yeah. yeah. I tend to think that the reason groups have failed is because no one's really done a great job at implementing mm. it. Um, I think um, I was listening to a podcast the other day talking about the upcoming Google Me, sure. um, and many believe that that's kind of going to be the selling point of the Google Me service is sort of segmenting people in groups, which um, Gmail kind of does intelligently, is yeah. kind of figure out who you're talking to and what, you know, who's who, and um, so I think that might be interesting to see what Google does as it relates to this, because a lot of people think that this is where they're headed with the yeah. service. Yeah, and at MySpace we have groups as well, and, and there's an insane amount of number, I don't even know how many millions of groups have been created, and uh, 
it wasn't really, it was done good for the time, but it's kind of languished in the meantime. So honestly, that's one of the reasons we acquired that company Threadbox a few weeks ago, to help yeah. kind of redo groups and really kind of rethink them. And yeah. yeah, I think that you should always have the public and private option. We have that right now too, as well. Uh, because yeah, sometimes you don't want the world to see right. your naughtiness. Yeah. Well, I, I think that what you're seeing though is a trend in a lot of apps and, and programs that are trying that are trying to figure out the group situation. Because I, I noted on the notes as well that the, there was an interesting one called Group Me, which allows people to create uh, SMS groups or text message based groups, which I thought was really interesting because as yeah. a promotional model, I have to sometimes text out 20 different model chicks to see if someone can cover my shift because the only communication methods we're allowed to use are cell phones uh, with our numbers. Can so we get that up, list of models to Mike? Yeah, as well, please? yeah, and then Mike, um, you can just send. Out a, a group me mass text to all of the Jaeger models, and you can say, <laughs> "Hi, I'm Mike Bracco, and here's my Plenty of Fish account." <laughs> <laughs> Just tell them you're Mike. I have enough muscles to drink Jaeger. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting. We did these, this thing called like uh, Startup Weekend in LA, and one of the companies addressed that same problem. And I forget yeah. who they are. I'd love to give them a plug. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but the big de their demo was like. Whenever you're trying to go out, it's like, oh, well, let me text Joe, and then let me yeah. text. Joe. Oh wait, he doesn't want to go there, and he doesn't like that, yep. and someone's gonna. And so it's this whole horrible weave that you kind of it you know, web that you is. weave. And so to take yeah. something like a group me, which you know allows you to create these SMS groups, and this isn't yeah. the first time I've heard about it. I, I remember pre-existing companies, but they were much more complicated to set up the groups than this one. Yeah. So. Uh, we're going through some awkward growing pains right now as far as being able to categorize people. We'll get through it. Yeah, we're going to be okay. <laughs> we're going to be make. okay. <laughs> Who wants to talk about Snoop Dogg? Who doesn't want to talk about, <laughs> wow, this is a very pot-heavy uh, I know. episode. Um, let's talk about Snoop. What is he smoking and or blowing up these days? Mike Bracco? Yes, yeah. so uh, this is kind of funny. So basically, Snoop Dogg uh, partnered with um, uh, to promote Mafia Wars. Um, mm. By Zanga, never uh, heard of it. Viral video marketing campaign where basically live he exploded a truck. So if they could roll that video, it's kind of oh, we do have the video. Please video. roll that video. <laughs> and so, do do you think does Zanga have audio. enough money? Because I mean they're doing this stuff now. And for three, you know, I'm trying to destroy the evidence. I know how to make it happen. Just like that. My name's Snoop Dogg, and uh, this is what I do oh, yeah. for a I'm living. I'm not gonna lie, that was slightly less mafia than I was hoping it would be. Yeah. He didn't show up in a pinstripe suit. There was no, there were no, you know, rifles or things around, and it, and the truck kind of looked a little contemporary for me. I was gonna say the same thing. It didn't really look <laughs> like an armored truck. Wasn't an armored truck? It looked like a, it didn't look like a Humvee truck. that he might it be rolling like, around on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, it looked like an SUV. Yeah, one of those. So, it was, so it was interesting. I mean, Zanga clearly likes to do these creative, out of the box mm, marketing sure. campaigns. When, you, when you've got money to burn, you yeah, can well, they literally have, burn things. They've raised yeah. like what, 500 million or something crazy something like that. Yeah. But um, this comes on the back of the um, thing they did a couple weeks back, mm -hmm. which was they uh, just kind of released a bunch of $25,000 bills, fake bills, in San Francisco. And they got kind of a lot of heat for it because mm -hmm. yeah. San Francisco was complaining about all the litter and stuff that it was causing. Yeah, um, although but, they uh, just did it uh, in New York as well, uh, and wow. so they got dinged again. So yeah, I mean, they're kind of, I love vowel marketing, I think it's Me fun. Too. We're, we're going to do some stuff in MySpace that'll probably get someone arrested. I, I think <laughs> you got to push the envelope. Um, Danny Dudick, who's their uh, communications, uh, or VP of communications over there, did kind of come out and say that it was, a, that viral stuff was another company they hired, they weren't really sure about it, mm -hmm. and so I think they, they're probably doing so much marketing that they're just like, what, who did that? Okay, yeah. you know, but I thought it was cool though. I love viral marketing, Me I too. really do. I think that, it, yeah. I think brands need to be innovative because you know the traditional advertising methods you can see yep. when you go to your Facebook you're not paying attention sure. to anything anymore you just don't have the, the ability to when you're bombarded by so much communication yeah. so it's interesting to see them do something that's you know and, and look tying in a celebrity is kind of tried and true like you really can't go wrong with that so. yeah and I was making some jokes about this like uh, as we're watching the video but I actually heard they got two million viewers mm -hmm. on Ustream for yep. that, which is insane when you think about two million viewers on TV and, and all yeah. these other things, so it's, it's certainly interesting. How many days in advance do you have to hype up blowing up something to get two million people to show up? I don't because know, they were hyping it quite a while, uh, at least a week or two. In seven days, yeah. I'm going to blow up a very small armored <laughs> car right here live on this weekend's social media.
Yeah. Let's do it. So tune in. Let's blow up Jason's Tesla. Do you think he'll mind? <laughs> Come on. He's, he's got his, you know. He has a pretty big following on Twitter, so I'm sure he tweeted about it. It seems like he's getting more social, too. I know he was yeah. talking about Foursquare and... I'm sure he's going to get into this new uh, pot roulette or whatever this is, too. I mean, <laughs> Stranger. Come on. So there he is. Honestly, when pot roulette launches, I want someone to just put a video on loop of Snoop Dogg just standing there looking high and see how many stoners you can trick to think that it's actually Snoop Dogg. Yeah, <laughs> I bet it'd work. Yeah. What else is he doing? These? How is he doing on followers? 1. So 1. 1.8 million followers, about. about. Wow. Does Pretty he make music Snoop. anymore? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> you got to love Snoop Dogg. Mm. I do remember when he quit pot. That was funny. That was great. Three days. <laughs> <laughs> what else is happening in this crazy world? So finally, to come back to the location-based devices, not that we haven't talked about them enough, um, sure. Foursquare now has a feature that will tell you when you're about to become mayor. As it, cool. Yeah, I was a little concerned for all my already power-hungry friends. Now they're just going to be like, <laughs> I have to check into this spot four more times this week in order to take over the world, slash Starbucks. <laughs> Do you think that'll make people game the system more? Yes. That's my concern. Yeah, they, I really do. I want to check in here and see see how many more I need. So Go right ahead. now, I guess the, the technical rules is you have to be the most checked in over the past two months. So I guess it's a resetting ongoing two-month period. Okay. Um, and I guess they do have some things in place to prevent gaming, hmm. um, but I'm not sure. It, I'm sure there are people who still find ways to be the mayor of certain places. but it, it does make me wonder, because this is such an obvious little element to have, if they had been keeping this in their pocket until they needed it, and now with all the hoorah about Facebook and you know apps like Message Party, if they just sort of pulled it out for a little PR. They are from New York, so they could be kind of sneaky like that. Um, I just tried it, actually. I didn't get it. So is it live now, or is it maybe... Uh, they said it's rolling out over the next couple of days. Ah, so. yes. Maybe you're not rolled out yet. I'm not rolled yet. <laughs> but uh, I do think it's interesting. It does definitely incentivize behavior. But before, you had no clue. Yeah. Um, and now, at least, you can... Maybe it'll kind of trigger, Absolutely. like, oh, that's right. Last time I was at Starbucks, uh, a homeless guy peed on me, and I needed to check in one more time to get the mayorship. <laughs> right. Sorry, that's only in L.A. Starbucks. <laughs> I am actually fascinated so when I go, I don't really go to Starbucks, but I'll see a Starbucks, and there typically there's you know a hobo outside drinking a, a $6 latte. Yeah. Right? Only in L.A. Where would you get that latte from? And though, smoking. Though yeah. I have learned from personal experience, this mm. has very little to do with social media, but it does have to do with Tell socialness. Us, is this about hobos? Because then it's okay. If you befriend the Starbucks people, they have, like, experience fence accounts for coffee and they can just hook you up. Yeah, I'm kind of aware and like it's weird, the one that I take my wife to all the time, one, the guy won't stop commenting that we look like we're in a vampire show or something and so I'm like, <laughs> alright, Lori, let's not wear black next time we go there. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of did get the feeling that there's some hookups going on. Yeah, it's happening. It's, well, the other thing, it's I, only the attractive women that The are other funny them. thing about Starbucks, definitely here in LA, mm. and I tweeted about this the other day, is literally every person who's there, MacBook, White MacBook. Mm. Always the white. And they're doing the screenplay. Like they got, the, you know, the, yeah. the paper and the screenplay. It's, it's a little cliche. It is free yeah. Wi-Fi. Yep. <laughs> Let's transition. What are we transitioning to? To a great moment in social media. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Another episode of Great Moments in Social Media. What do we have today? Uh, so this is kind of a good story. So. Um, this guy, basically, his his grandfather, thirteen um, year old guy, by the way, thirteen year old guy, uh, clear to his grandfather, really young and um, his father had an illness and uh, lung cancer, mm. and because of some loophole with his insurance, the employer, which was the Metropolitan uh, Area Transit Authority of Washington, was denying his his benefits and significantly reducing them. Um, That's a huge shock that they would try huge and do shock. that. Oh, yeah. shocking! That insurance Good. company so do that. Tell me how this works out, though, because you're you're starting to make me a little sad. So basically, what he did was he uh, launched a fan page mm -hmm. um, and started advertising on Facebook um, to get uh, fans for the for the group. Um, and it kind of goes through the story as well as the strategy that he implemented. So it's a great uh, it's a great story. If you uh, throw the link in the chat room um, on how he went about getting all these fans, but at the end of it, uh, he ended up with 16,000 fans in 96 hours. Um, got such uh, momentum behind um, the initiative uh, that people were commenting on the Metropolitan's uh, Facebook page. They had to close down comments. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Um, so really uh, sort of got uh, a lot of attention around this issue. I thought it was a really good um, way to show how Facebook groups can really um, change things and, and bring up an issue, so. Yeah, well, and it was, mm. and it was testament to, uh, as well to 
how things go viral and how easy it can be if it's managed well and if yeah. it's for the right purposes because this was for one individual now there's no reason then every charity shouldn't be able to also rally on Facebook to have followers that are yeah. doing positive initiatives. You know? I think though it's, it has to be unique to these these kind of stories. So I saw another another situation where um, uh, a guy was tra a child was traveling, a mom was traveling with her son and his wheelchair was broke uh, through the travel experience, through United or some horrible airline. And so they wouldn't do anything for him, they wouldn't help him and they went to Twitter and basically got people to just go crazy. And it's mm. almost like release the hounds, yeah. you know, release the social media hounds on them and sure enough the airline saw the bad press, they started, they, they actually resolved the issue, they bought him a new chair, you know, because obviously wheelchairs aren't, aren't, aren't cheap. So this is similar too. So I don't think you can do this from a charity standpoint but it, mm. I think it is great that one, I mean it's awesome, he's 13 years Years old, he wants to help out his dad. Um, he got the fans. That's great. He's built some momentum. What is he doing with it now, though? Or, or what are we going to do? Are we going to go knock down the door of this insurance company? Uh, should we burn it down? Is there somewhere you can donate? Like, what, what else is he trying to do? Yeah. So no, it was just basically to get momentum. And I think um, he is. There are the insurance company is adjusting what what they were saying, which is good. But we'll see how it turns out. Mm. I think it's still sort of in the process of yeah. being figured out. Great. I think you should always fight the insurance companies because they're horrible. But I gotta say, for the first time in my life, I have good health insurance. I've never had good health insurance. Welcome to modern day America under Barack Obama. Yeah, is it? Is that what it is? You know, and, and we had a baby with Barack. It's kind of the Barack baby <laughs> boom. Like, everything's coming up roses for me, but everyone says it's still crappy, so I don't know. And stop playing footsie with me. Hey. Hey. -o. Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert, what you got? I miss watching Colbert. I used to watch him all the time. He did this great video. Bear with us. It's a little long, uh, but I think it's definitely worth it, and it's funny and has some good mentions. So go ahead and roll that tape. In the public's eye on me right now is social media. I am all over Facebook, MySpace, Foursquare, Reddit, LinkedIn, <laughs> Google Buzz, LiveJournal, Blippi, Twitter, Tumblr, Flickr, Muffler, Flumpler, and let's say gargler. You see, social media is the only way to reach young people these days without giving your abs a nickname. And evidently, nobody liked the laundry sack. But kids, kids, all this online openness comes with a price. I know people who've been let go of their job because they shared a little bit too much about what they were doing online. If we're hiring an intern or, or a new employee, the first thing you do nowadays is go online and look at yeah. their Facebook page. You know, the pictures of you shooting back tequila shooters, <laughs> pole dancing, not information that your employer wants to see. Especially if you're working... ...ad. <laughs> Even know, Barack. Look, looks like she was having a few uh, tequila <laughs> shooters with those, that That's distortion really there. That's inappropriate. Um, so Colbert, right on point as always, although it's kind of an old argument at this point. I mean, it's always the old, out of touch news lady who's like, you don't want to have those drinking shots up there. Yeah. Right? I can't blame them. They, they're not even allowed to, by their networks, have progressive, thought-provoking social media discussions. Do they give them a lobotomy when they walk in? You should, you're in the business, sort of. How does that work? Uh, okay, so I do. it turns out that I host outside of this particular That's what content. I hear. Mo for the most part, I think the truth of the matter is people don't know that much about a lot of different topics, especially when you choose to be in front of the camera. Yeah. So it's, it's not that they're not intelligent. It's just that they don't have reasoning skills. <laughs> There's some horrible, That's not yeah. true of any of the hosts on the This Weekend Network no, who are all very intelligent, very attractive, and, and talented reasoners. <laughs> that is true. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, one, let's hear for Blippi. They are on the national stage. Way to get Good shout out. Yeah. yeah, I think he's made fun of them in the past, too. Was um, it just me, or were you guys just waiting for Twitter? I was like, where's the Twitter? Where's the Twitter? I was surprised that they weren't up front. I was amazed that it was MySpace and Facebook were the first two. Yeah, congratulations. Good, good for us. We're yeah. still relevant. Yeah. Colbert still uses us. Does he have a profile? I don't know. He should. I'll make one for him if he doesn't. Um, but yeah, Twitter was kind of at the end. I don't know. Maybe Twitter's become a little passe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he was just toying with us. Possibly. He also really used social media, I think, really well when he was getting the show off the ground. Yeah. I remember watching it, the contests, the blogs he was doing, the videos he was creating. I mean, he really did a great job of, of capitalizing. Obviously, it's his audience. 
males who, you know, have nothing better to do at night. Yeah. Well, it makes me feel good about my life that the thing that I spend 12,000 hours a day doing is now being shouted out by someone semi-famous. That's good. And do you have any shots of you doing tequila shooters on your page? No, but if I did, it might get me cast in that role as the girl doing tequila shots. Never so know. It, I don't think that all photos are bad photos to go on your Facebook when considered by That's employers. True. Only when you're as good looking as you, though. Everyone else, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. Um, it is true, though, I got to say, when I'm hiring folks, take a glance at the resume, throw it away, and then go right to Google, mm. I got to say. Mostly because I just want to make sure, like, are they social in some sense? They're yeah. coming to work for an internet company. If you don't have some of the basics, then it's probably not a right match. Absolutely. And also, don't wear a tie whenever you interview with me. That's insane. Why would people yeah. do that? I know. See, now you're well, now you're throwing all that mess in there about the old school and the new school, and you never yeah. know who you're meeting with. It's, it's true. better to be safe don't. than sorry because they can un if if they come in and they've got the tie and you're all cashed out, they can yeah. just be like, loosen the tie, roll up the sleeves. They show up, you're in a suit, they're not. Ooh. I know. I would love to interview someone and I'm, they walk in and just rip off their shirt or something <laughs> and they have like a big Superman. Preferably <laughs> it would be a girl. <laughs> Either or, it doesn't matter, it's cool. If Mike's yeah. actually wearing a Superman shirt under this, yeah. I don't know if you know. This week in Mike Bracco. Yeah. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> But uh, this is a great video. If you guys uh, check it out on your own time, the link's going to be in the show notes. It's quite quite comical. Because um, he actually brought true. up Eric Schmidt's comments, which he recently made uh, about the uh, changing your name when you're older as the solution to escape. I think these Eric issues. was. I honestly think Eric was joking about that. The yeah. Google CEO. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure he was, and and the media kind of ran with it. I thought that was funny, but yeah. Um, you know, we have a few more minutes, so. Let's take a look at Reddit real quick, because they were having a little bit of a dust up as well today, and I thought this was kind of a great moment. So essentially, uh, Wired, I think, refused to take advertisements for a uh, some type of initiative that was supporting a new pop pot-related proposition here in California. God, everything's about pot today. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, pull up Reddit if you can on the screen there. So I think you might be talking about this story right here. Yeah, that was one of them. But if you keep scrolling down, go down to like page two or three. You should, there you go. Isn't that insane? Like, literally what happened is Wired said, no, we will not run these Prop 19 support ads. Uh, and so what happened is the Reddit community said, you know what, we'll run those ads and we'll run it for free as well. Wow. Um, but building up to that is where you have this kind of, these wonderful user revolts that you see that Dig has experienced. So on the same day, both Dig and Reddit are having a user revolt of some type. I just which, want you guys to know, Mercury hmm. is in retrograde, which means that communication methods are supposed to be spiraling out of control for the next three weeks. That so that explains probably everything. Ex it really does explain everything. By the way, my, my computer went I had to reinstall the operating system, and now everything's messed. I noticed you didn't bring it today. It's, no. Is it dead, dead, or have you recovered it? It just needs some. It needs a nap. It needs a nap. So okay. I left it at home. That's good. Yeah. Great. But yeah, so hence all of the you know explosions of communication going on on these networks. What I just want to know what's going to happen on Facebook tomorrow. Something bad is going to happen. Yeah. Something. How long is Mercury in retrograde? And, and for two more weeks, I think, or three more weeks oh, we're until screwed. September something. Oh yeah, yeah. life's over. We're done. So. Great. On that wonderful note, I think we're going to wrap up this show of This Week in Social Media. We want to thank our sponsor as well, Gazelle. Go to gazelle.com, sell your stuff. Uh, make sure you use code TWI5, and that'll give you an extra five cents. Careful, what are you clicking on, no, Rocco? No, no, I hope it's not, on. Been, not safe for work. <laughs> uh, and uh, as always, like we're talking about as well, thank you, Mobile Roadie, for doing our iPhone app. It's a great way to watch the show live. So while you're on the bus between message partying, you can get in there and, and watch the show and look at archives. And um, there's lots of topless photos of both Juliana and Mike in there as well, too. So another reason that you might want to get it. Thanks again, and uh, join us next week.